fast start, test complete, module 10, test logging. So each time we run a test, a project, or even a project suite, we will get an entry under the project logs for that test run. So if we run a suite, we'll see the project suite logs at this level. If we run a whole project, so if I was to run this particular whole project here, run project, I'd see an entry under my projects. Or if I run individual tests, we'll see a reference to individual test runs here. So you can see here test one, test two. So one test, project or suite, will relate to one or more test logs or test runs. So if I run this test, and it carries out a number of test steps, and then completes the checkpoints, and all of that information, including the test steps that were completed, and the checkpoints will be stored within the log for that particular run. So we have a, another run for test one, and you can see we have multiple runs from the past there, but this particular test run, we have an entry for each test step. So we get a picture here of expected image, actual image. So expected to click on button four, we did click on button four. And as we step through that, we then come to the property checkpoints, where we get an image of the object where the checkpoint was carried out. And we get some additional info that covers things like the actual value and expected value. Um, call stack is when we have one call, one test calling other tests, and we can see that trace back on the call stack. And then we can add some performance um, actions or methods for certain objects, um, which we'll look at in another module. You'll notice we have the ability to filter up the top here. So I can remove all the error messages, move all the warnings, or I could even remove all of the events if I just want to look at the checkpoints. There is an advanced search capability, so you can search for text here. And if you right click on here, you can also do filter data, so you can come up with uh, complex um, logic to search for specific messages within your log files. Also on that context sensitive menu is the ability to show a summary, choose certain fields, so you could add uh, descriptions from your tests in there as well if you want, and for you to copy and then paste into other documents all of your, your test logs if you need to. You'll also find a different context sensitive menu here if you right click on the log items and then you can send the log via email, you can export it to defect tracking systems or you can view the results in, in browsers for example. Now you can manipulate these log entries yourself in your tests so if you if we double click on one of these entries here in the log it'll take us to that test step in the test case itself and you'll see that there are under the operations panel the ability for us to specify a number of actions to manipulate the log so we could enter our own log message for example so I could put a message and you can set the type of message here so it might just be a, a message it could be an error a warning or an event and there's some other properties you can set for the for the message there. And we can also create folders or post a screenshot within that log file. So if you wanted to put this within a subfolder, you can create folders on your log files. And then the log messages that come after that log crea uh, folder creation step will go into the new folder. And then you can come out of that folder level by doing a pop log folder so any subsequent log messages will then be outside of the log of that folder that you just created. <laughs>